two, one. Hello and welcome to chapter 214 of the DC Alliance podcast. With me, as always, is Joe. Joe, how you doing today? That's me. I'm doing, I'm doing good. Uh, work was a little hectic today. We uh, just did a busy, busy week. I'm trying to get a different position, so I'm hoping, um, I hope that goes through. Uh, but I, I won't find that out until Tuesday. But uh, yeah, no, it's just been a been a busy week. I got a busy weekend ahead of me. Um, my daughter has got a job interview on Sunday, so that's going to be Ooh. fun. I mean, it's just for McDonald's, but it's Don't, a job. So for, if job, it's a job, especially exactly. build, builds more experience. I found oh like, yeah, yeah. The that, plus, I keep very valuable. I, she's hanging out with friends more, okay. and I keep telling her. Like you need you need a job so you can pay for it yourself because I can't give you twenty bucks every time. <laughs> I am and I will because I love my daughter, but I like to not have to give her money if I don't work have to. ethic. Work ethic exactly. things too. Something something work <laughs> ethic. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, Joe. Uh, I'm a little tired. It's the three podcast weeks uh, sometimes get to me. Uh, I've been doing those a lot with X Men ninety seven. Uh, and Dick, I had a slow week last week with just one episode because we were off. Uh, yes. I, I won the uh, fantasy basketball championships, nice little oh, $500 into my account, not having to pay anything out. And the rights of uh, the COVID terribleness have been have been finally, the rags have finally been righted. Uh, I was first place going into, I traded some draft picks. This is a keeper league, and we were getting ready for the playoffs a couple weeks out. And COVID shut down the entire basketball league, oh. and our league just went to the next year. So the draft picks I had traded were basically useless. You only get to keep three players, so it, it was terrible. And it took me a couple of years to rebuild, but I came back stronger than ever. My team was basically the monster from Space Jam, and I yeah. won, so I was very happy uh, about that. Uh, so yeah, that was my that was my week, uh, <laughs> winning and uh, crying from X Men '97. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means because yeah. I haven't watched the show yet. You're one of the only ones. God comic shop. That's what it sounds like. like holy God crap. comic shop of the day had a good conversation with me about it too. He was. We were talking about the potential after this. So literally uh, everybody's watching it. There was a guy at work uh, last week. No, no, actually, it was earlier this week. Who I like I interrupted him because I needed a question about something, and he was sitting there watching it on his phone. And I'm like, mm, I can't watch this. I don't. I don't need to watch this. Not yet. So yeah, literally everybody's watching this. But yeah, it's, it's great, and Marvel Alliance is doing a great job covering that. I joined them last night uh, live. Check that out. It dropped today in feed. Uh, Joe, we got some stuff to talk about this week, though. We got, yeah, we, got tra- news. we got a trailer. We got some news. Uh, just, I mean, strange times, I guess, or it takes a couple weeks to build up these days. The beginnings days. of times, if you will. But a yeah. Batman beginnings. Ooh, wait, ooh, wait, wait. We're not <laughs> recording. That's that's. Oh my bad. Week. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get the network plugs out of the way. We are part of the Geek Ultimate Alliance with seven shows in total. On Mondays, bi weekly is Ranger Alliance. On Tuesdays, is a walk through the multiverse. Bi weekly again now that Invincible is over. Uh, uh, maybe some weekly maybe, stuff. I got, I got stuff going on. Joe got Fallout and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you can cover anything. So the potential. Yeah, I do are actually want to watch Fallout. But no, but I mean, I got, I got some interviews coming up with some people. Uh, I've got shows that I need to catch up on and watch. So I might stick with weekly for a while just for it until I get caught up. I don't want to pin you down, but yeah. That, okay, we'll 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 stick on weekly for now for a walk through the multiverse. Check out the last episode, which I was on with Joe. We talked about the season finale of Invincible. Yeah. Uh, what, a, what an awesome season. And I could not have been happier, Joe. I got to join you for pretty much every episode. I think I missed two. I think all but like one, two, yeah. One in Maybe first three. half, one in second half. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe two in the second half and one in the first half, or two in the first half, one in the second half. Whatever, yeah, whatever, regardless, anyway. regardless. On Wednesdays is the Animation Nation. On Thursdays is Star Wars Alliance. On Fridays is Marvel Alliance. On Saturdays is DC Alliance. And Sundays monthly is World's Finest True Believers. Star Wars Alliance goes live in the Geekverse YouTube channel Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Marvel Alliance goes live Thursdays at 9 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and DC Alliance goes live Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time normally. 
All three of those shows also have their own podcast feed. Search DC Alliance, Marvel Alliance, or Star Wars Alliance if you just want DC content, Marvel content, or Star Wars content only. But if you want all seven shows on the GUA network, stay subscribed to the GUA on your podcast app of choice. We also have a Patreon, two tiers, a dollar tier and a five dollar tier. The dollar tier is basically a tip jar like we're doing and you want to help us out any way you can. And the five dollar tier is where you get your extras. You get your ad-free episodes, early access to episodes, and Patreon exclusive episodes. Myself and Joe are going through all the DC films through the years. Next on deck for us is Batman Begins. We have plans to re- schedule to record that next weekend. And that will get up early before the last weekend in April. Uh so joe i'm excited to talk to you about that and i my hot take review for vendetta was i thought it was a tad overrated uh first time for me watching so we really get in we really get into that and the patrons will love it we also have the marvel alliance guys chris and brant doing their tales from the house of x they're talking about their favorite fox marvel movies not just x-men because the first two are deadpool deadpool one has already been up deadpool two is scheduled to record sometime in the next few days i think it was this coming Monday, I was on with him last night and they talked about it, but I was really tired at one point. So, <laughs> one point. Uh, well, it got to 12 o'clock when we ended. I was they like, record oh my God. pretty late for, for you. yeah, for old Newfie, no old Newfoundland time here. Uh, so yeah, um, it, uh, it, it great. I, I love the Deadpool things. They also have, uh, their whole Infinity Saga rewatch, over 30 pieces of content up there for the patrons. We have Joe's Multiverse Minutes as well. Joe's doing his Disney deep dives. Uh, the one that came up last was Fantasia, and now in a few days, Joe, another one is going to hit the... Yep, hit Dumbo the is coming out here uh, on the 15th. The, so. the guy with the flying ears. A lot of interesting information in Dumbo, if I might say. Things I'm yeah. finding out that I never really knew about. <laughs> so... Not and not just all of that stuff. Other like things behind the scenes stuff. This is one thing I've been loving with the Disney dives. All the information behind the scenes. It's it's stuff I never knew. I'm a big Disney fan. Big love the movies when I was younger. Love them now. So this stuff is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, if if you're a Patreon, go check that one out. It's, I, it's... I enjoy it. Again, I love Joe's Multiverse Minutes, and we thank everyone that's a patron, but if you're not a patron, if you can take a quick 30 to 60 seconds to rate and view the podcast on your podcast app of choice, it's always greatly appreciated. It helps other people find the shows, and that's always a good thing. Okay, Joe, let's get into uh, our main topic tonight. Uh, we got a trailer, yeah. uh, which, again, is shocking in its own right. It's content for DC, uh, <laughs> for Joker, Folly Adieu, Joker 2, I'm going to be calling it. Because uh, I'm not in French class anymore. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, of course, I'll probably still say the title every time. Uh, I did only say Birds of Prey, though. So, um, Joker 2 trailer, <laughs> we got that. Uh, it's coming out on October the 4th, yep. I think, uh, yep. in IMAX, shot entirely in IMAX. So, I'm going to share my screen. Myself and Joe are going to talk yeah, about this that, trailer. Because it was shot entirely in IMAX, I kind of maybe want to go see it in IMAX. Uh, yeah. they we've got one IMAX theater here in town, uh, and then the other one is like in Indy, so it's two hours away. Uh, that one's a better one, but then we the one here is closer, so I don't know. We'll see. So, close captions on, ready to rock. Let's hit this trailer, Joe. Uh, it'll be open with Arthur in the uh, Arkham Asylum, and I do like this, looks like a TV to me. Like, he's stuck behind the TV for people to watch. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, that's the first thought I had when I was watching it. I was like, that kind of looks interesting as you come zooming out. Obviously, it's a cell, but not I, have. Yeah. And there is some interesting things to note. Like, when he's walking here first, uh, it's dark. Uh, the, the, the umbrellas that the guards have are dark. And then he sees Harley here. Uh, and this kind of changes everything. You'll see in a minute after he's having this cigarette here, because again, I don't know how. How does he get a cigarette in to the uh, asylum like that? It's thinking right. Actually, I can't really say well, that because I, mean, I, I went and picked up Allison from an old folks' home uh, place that she was working at uh, today, and there was older people out there in like wheelchairs having smokes and stuff. So uh, it's one of those things, and I don't know, like if prisons and jails. If it's a movie trope or if it's t- TV trope, or whatever, but or if it actually is real, but like that's their currency in there, and that's how they they get the cigarettes, they get things somehow, some way. Yeah, and again, so, this is this might be like a, this is Arkham Asylum. This is not quite as prisony, depending on how they want to go with this. They're not going to go with sure. it like 
all oh, these super villains locked up. They're going to be like people with mental health issues that like varying degrees. You've seen the people that Harley was just in the room with yeah. that are uh, singing choir essentially. Yeah. And right here is what I want to talk about. See the colors of the umbrellas, Joe? They're all dark, right? Just make note of that because you, it does change at a certain point here. Really? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And this is because he's, in my opinion, this is because he saw Harley and like colors and brought back into his life. Mm, okay. Uh, that's how I took I like, it to watch him change. And then we I see like Harley, walk, Harley walking up the steps. Uh, and we get the same thing that she did with he did with Zazzy Beats, or he thought he did with Zazzy Beats character. Well, so the Zazzy also did this to him yeah. initially, which is why he did it to her, thinking, hell yeah, we got a connection. And it kind of weirded her out. So. Yeah. And then we uh, go to him. I did. I love the how. Like I, honestly, the visuals here are fantastic. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And we get him and her talking here. Uh, I can't wait to tell, tell you. She says, I "Let's get out of here." Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, we get some of these musical style set pieces here. Uh, they're on top of what they're calling the Arkham Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, dancing with the moon behind them. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's, this is what they're actually doing. <laughs> oh, I 100% think that's what they're actually doing, dancing in the middle of the street. And we get... Uh, I love that scene. Yeah, he's chased by two other Jokers. We yeah. get the Joker and Harley, because this looks just like the Murray show. It's just their version of it, Joker and Harley. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's there playing guitar. She's there dancing, doing a thing. Well, she was playing, playing piano, dancing, yeah. And this looks like his trial, uh, because there are newspapers there at some other points where wait, I might have just missed it where it said like free Joker. Uh, uh, I think it might be later. Uh, free. Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. So oh, well, that's spoilers. But again, I don't think this is real. I think where the colors of this is, this is uh, like something in Joker's head. I think this might be where he gets convicted. He thinks he's like, yeah, <laughs> everything's oh, well, okay. I mean, a hundred percent. This movie is going to have an unreliable narrator. Mm -hmm. In, but it's not going to be just Arthur. It's going to be Harley as well. Yes. So it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see here. Because like I can see that wedding thing. That's definitely probably a Harley uh, problem. And this is probably a Harley thing versus the trial being a Arthur thing. And we see it looks like Harley was part of the uh, riots from the original movie right here. Because okay. Joe, Joker is on the screen. Ah, gotcha. In the yeah. TV. So that's that definitely looks think, like that might be her, yeah. That's what's making me think that this was like during the first riot. So maybe that's why she has a thing for him. Uh and we get an explosion here. It looks like this is this potentially could be the courthouse, maybe. Uh not a hundred percent sure. Like I don't see any stenographer. No, but anything. that does look like TV camera in the background. Yeah, that, so again, it could it could very well be. Uh, this also, be looks the, like, uh, and yeah, I think you're right. I think it is in the warehouse. This could be the it looks like the state. not the pulpit, but that that uh, uh, bear, not the, the what is this called? Well, the thing in between separating the crowd from the defendant, all that stuff. Barricade. There we go. Well, barricade, but like um, banister of sorts. Okay. There we go. And then we see him here. She's saying, this, shot, man. this is cinematography at its finest. Like, and the music playing too is fantastic. Uh -huh. He's like, I want to see the real you. Uh, and we get his uh, crazy smile lining uh, up with the perfectly. yeah, dude. That was an amazing shot. And Freaking amazing. I, man, I am like, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited. I really want to see this now. Like, it's, this looks pretty cool. Um, my girlfriend, she saw the trailer and she's like, "I have zero interest in watching this." But she didn't watch. She didn't watch the first one. She had no interest in watching the first one. So, like, this didn't get. She loves getting Lady Gaga, and she that would be the only reason why she'd go see this. But even that didn't get her. Didn't draw her in. So, which is kind of a bad thing. You know, Gaga was supposed to bring in the. People who, demographic that didn't come yeah, to this. Yeah, not yeah. well. Not everybody is coming not to everybody. it, but like, 
you know, this, if there was a sorry, if, yeah, if there was a female demographic that they missed, maybe it was, and that's why they brought her in. Or yeah, maybe just, like, I mean, honestly, talent. like this looks, this looks fun. This looks fantastic, Joe. This looks like a critical darling, and this looks like it could be a very enjoyable movie. I watched the first movie once. I never rewatched the movie. Honestly, I enjoyed, enjoyed it. I took Allison with me. We went and watched it. Allison and I really enjoyed it. Allison looked over at me after the movie finished and asked first, was there any post credits? I was like, no, that's not what this is. That's not and, no. and then she was like, this was a really good film and I don't think I'll ever see it again. And I was like, that's exactly how I feel after watching this. It's because... one of the things where I don't, I couldn't see myself watching it over and over again. Like, yeah. like a BVS yeah. or a Shazam, like it's, or Wonder Woman. Like it's one of those movies where, it was awesome. It was it captured a moment in time. I could watch it maybe three times total. Like I I'll watch it again before people, I'll see this new same, one. Same, same. I could see how other people would do it, like depending on what you like, because there's a whole element of how much of the events actually did take place and how much is in his mind. Oh yeah, again, we're gonna go so like because here I want to say uh, actually we'll take our first ad break before I tell you my theory. This is how you do this. Nice. Uh, listeners weren't as support network. We don't pick the ads or the volume. We're going to do a quick three count to adjust your volume, and we'll be right back in three, two, one. And we're back. Okay, Joe. So my theory is that none of this stuff actually happens. I think that uh, Joker basically thinks this up while Harley is interviewing him in the chair. I think that I, I think that's probably how this might end. Is that we'll find it. That this was all in Joker's head after he's trying to be assessed f to stay in trial for all this stuff that he's done. Uh, th maybe I'm wrong. Could very well be. I don't know, because that's kind of the literally one. the very first one. Like, I don't think they're going to do that again. Well, I mean, a lot of stuff actually did potentially hit. The only thing that we're not sure took place are some of the stuff with the Zazie Beats character, but a lot of the stuff did Honestly, take Honestly, everything place. with her. Except for, the yeah. except for that beginning part where he met her in the elevator the first time with the kid. After yeah. that, Literally everything was in all his in his head. Yeah. The the comedy set was in his head, like up until the Murray show. Yeah, everything was in his head, and then he became out of his head. Like I think this just is like Murray, be, just like Murray did. Exactly. Uh, I definitely think this is going to be. There will be, like I said, some un unreliable narrators from both sides, but I definitely think he is gonna be going to trial i think she is a she is incarcerated as well Ooh, and uh um, that's what i hope it is but i do think there's a possibility where that she is dissolved in his head too i do think that that is on the table i mean you're not wrong you i especially if you think about it she's Some saying hey let's, let's get too, out though. of here and then they're in the they're in the in the middle of the road dancing like how is she going up and giving him brainers uh, with her cigarettes in between when he's in a cell, how does she have the clearance to do that? Like, it's like again, like they're not wrong. Maybe that out. was her leave. Like maybe she got she was cleared. She got out and she wanted to go say goodbye to him. I don't know. It, it, that could be, but again, like they're dancing up on top of the Arkham Hotel. That seems like there's in their that, head. No, they're that's dancing in their head. when he's freed. That seems like it's in his head. So I again, think that is not. But we'll see. And we'll that see. all that that's the thing about this movie too. It gives you the potential of like theories what could it possibly be it gives you some anticipation to going going into the movie too because sure. you're not sure what it could be uh and i do like that part of it and with lady gaga in this and harley i'm, I'm hoping it's a little bit more fun than the last one that's all and i think the musical elements may may do that uh just a couple things to come out of this joe uh the joker trailer uh earned 167 million views in 24 hours becoming warner brothers biggest trailer since barbie and this was from Variety, so that is good news for a bunch cool. of two hundred million. Um, and there were some visual parallels there that I put in with uh, the first film. We have Joker, we have Arthur walking up the steps, and Harley walking up the steps. Zazzy Same and Harley too. doing stuff, and very similar the uh, face paint and what he's doing and she's doing, and them going down the steps together, and him going down the steps, and then the final thing with him putting a face on and her putting the blood face on. Uh, that that was really cool when I saw that came across my Twitter. I was like, I gotta throw that in. Uh, and there was the other thing here of Lady Gaga as uh, 
Harley Quinn just a couple shots of her. Yeah, and I love the one cool. in, in, in the uh, old the outfit that is made to look uh, like you could actually see it in everyday life, uh, but paying homage to what it actually was the first time. So uh, I'll, I love it, Joe. I, I think it's great. And again, it's good for DC to get a win like that. That's uh, something that doesn't happen all the time. Right. Especially, especially now. They've been making decisions left and right that really hasn't been great. No. Uh, okay, so let's hop into some news. Now, Joe, it's been a little while. Uh, this fun one, I think it's a good little discussion for us, and we, I think we've both been saying this before. Zack Snyder was asked by Empire, would he be open to finishing his Justice League trilogy in animated form? And he said, yes, absolutely. That'd be fun. That'd be cool. Uh, gimme, I, gimme, gimme. I think that would be a great idea. You might be Honestly, able to keep quiet a certain thing that's going like keep quiet some trolls uh and actually give good content to some of us that are actually sensible people that like yeah. that uh continuity as well while also going forward with uh dc because dc animated even did uh, separate things they're doing it now even because creature commandos is coming out but they also have like a watchman movie coming out and uh the justice league crisis on infinite earth movies coming out so again, yeah, you can gonna, do yeah. things. And Gunn did say it's not going to be all the animated stuff. Is not going to be DCU. So yeah, keep everything. You, I mean, the current rebirth stuff, the the crisis, the crisis stuff. Like that's technically an Elseworlds from the DCEU. Yeah. And we've got two more movies coming out. They're both releasing this year. One Which, this month, April twenty oh, third. Nope. Oh, it's April. Yep. Shoot, I need to check. Check my Amazon order. Trust, um, trust me on this. No, I believe you. I thought it was later in the year because then the third one would be like end of the year. But anyway, sorry. This is going to um, be all wrapped up before Creature Commandos hits. Perfect. Uh, but no, like this, this could be something after the rebirth is done. I would love to see this. And you can also get the actors to come back and do the voices. So, mm -hmm. and it's not, it, it's not hurting them you know, contractually with any other project. Uh, I mean, it would take up a couple days maybe to, to be able to just voice the roles, but the biggest thing would be the animation, which could be done. Um, at the same time, why would Snyder want to come back for this? He does not just him. need to, not just him. Why would Ben Affleck want to come back and voice well, Batman? Why would Gal Gadot? Why would Henry Cavill, who's been burned, Eight or nine times. Well, that by too. Studio. But Why but, want but to again, back? they'd be coming back because neither's asking them to come back. They don't have to. Like no. they can easily. He it and could then, be if one of these. It, if one of those big Justice League players that says no, will you replace them? Will you? Well, that's the thing. Like not it, do the project then. Like that's the question too. Here's the the thing. Um, everybody is kind of like Ezra Miller has kind of gone into conclusion if you will um and he need and they need to they need mm -hmm. to step back for a while so you know they were replaced in invincible quietly didn't even realize it until after the show yep so it's one of those things where okay well they don't have to have them back but nope. If they did get him back, I wouldn't be upset. I don't think many time, people would be upset about him voicing a character correct. Like but at the same time, you don't need to have... You know who these characters are. You can yeah. get a voice actor who is pretty darn close. Would I love for it to be the original actors? Rick 100%. and Morty sound pretty much like Rick and Morty. So That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like Anybody can, can get, get that. Voice acting is a talent that I do not have. It is a talent other people do. And they can definitely sound like the people they need to, they sound, to sound like. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that Snyder could continue on his trilogy in these two animated movies and not have the actors come back. That being said, I think he would ask them, and I think they, because it's him asking and not WB or DC heads, I think they would, because they would be a little more hands-off with them doing the voices versus being there and being like, no, it needs to be like this. Like, like it was with the previous stuff. So I don't know. I don't see them doing this. I don't see DC allowing them to do this. 
I think. Oh, it's not going to happen. But if they, I I would love it. I would love it, Joe. I love it. And I wouldn't be. I would would, wouldn't mind if some of the voice actors got replaced and you're just doing the story. Again, Uh, okay. You already know who it is. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So again, I would love this idea. I, I would love it, but is is again? I don't want to get there. Was no hopes to get up for this because this isn't happening. It's a fun idea, a fun question. I didn't put in any of the other stuff that's been going around, like the Batman killing stuff. Again, I would put my head through the wall if I had to try to put that back in the notes for like a seventeenth time to talk about. So yeah, I couldn't. That was that. Some of that stuff's making the rounds again too. He's not not stupid at what he's doing, which is creating buzz before his release of his film. Uh, yeah, that I did not week. watch part one, so um, I'm okay with what you're doing to try to market the film. That's fine, no problems here. I would love to see the anime stuff, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, which stands me too. One that I another thing that I want to talk to you about that I, I got excited about was the official reveal of the logo for Superman, uh, for, for Legacy. Well, uh, for cool. just Superman now, it's not called Legacy, Superman Legacy, more it's just Superman. So I love the logo. I think it's fresh. It's a different take. It's a little kingdom cummy, but I, in all the good ways. I mean, I'll just say this. It'll look nice on my arm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, it looks really cool. I really do like it. <laughs> and uh, another thing here for uh, first, um, the, the first emotional trailer for Superman, the Christopher Reeve story was shown at CinemaCon. Uh, it, the the film releases in theaters this September, so we should be seeing uh, a trailer for that soon. I'm excited to see that film, Joe. That's going to be I'm... a great documentary. It's a nice little behind the scenes of the Superman films with Chris Reeves, and it goes beyond that with Chris Reeves, obviously. But some of the stuff has never been seen before. I'm really excited to get a look at this. I've been told this is great. Yeah, I'm a uh, love Chris Reeve. Uh, when I heard about this, I was just one of those things where I'm like, okay. I'll yeah, watch Ali, we'll we'll probably review that. I'd you think say. so? Be, yeah, I think that'll be a thing we do, depending being on how it's, it's I'll say being a documentary, it might be a little... It might be harder for me to see. It might, we might be waiting until... Uh, or maybe we'll wait and just give our thoughts on it when it drops uh, streaming-wise, because well, it might yeah, be we'll harder see. for me to see. If, I don't know if it's going to go to my theater or not. I only have one theater, so it's not exactly like I got a slew of choices or anything. So if yeah, it's not there, this, we might have to wait until streaming for this. This being a documentary, I don't know if it'll show in... I mean, it'll be in theaters, like I said, but what theaters? Like, yeah, will it be in the big, big cities? Which obviously will be in the big cities, but like, obviously, like you said, you're a little tiny island. Like, I doubt you'll be getting a a documentary in the theaters. Well, yeah, see, some stuff we have gotten. So it all depends on if it's uh, a sub, like a cinema, Cineplex, sorry. Whoever okay. owns Cineplex in the U.S. version of it, because there is a U.S. Uh, version Regal, version. I believe. Regal. So if Regal's the one that has this, there is a better chance that I might be able to see it. But it okay. might be just a one-day thing because they don't keep them all week or anything. So if they do do some of these stuff like well, on a Wednesday or a. I'll say so, they do a lot of uh, Fandango events or what yeah. they call them, Fathom yeah. events. Sorry, Fathom. I've gotten events. a few. I've gotten a few events like getting to see Shazam early, the first one. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to be seeing uh, the. Ministry of a Gentleman Warfare early. Ooh, we'll see that tomorrow. Nice. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it, yeah, pretty cool. So, yeah, again, it's I, I'm excited to see this and something that I'm not as excited about. Uh, the company for the Behind Dune popcorn bucket is working on movie theater merchandise for Superman. I don't know why you're not excited about this. I mean, it's gonna be amazing. You get a popcorn bucket where, or a Superman, Superman bucket bu- where, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to see what that no, Superman this, bucket is going to be. It's, look, the marketing <laughs> it's be for, for the Dune sure. bucket was amazing. Literally, all you had it marketed it itself. Like, Stick your I don't, I don't your think shit. we're gonna get as like out of hand with any Superman merch as we did with the Dune bucket. But um, I thought it was pretty cool, though. I did. I thought that was true. like a, a a fun thing to see see there. Uh, Hold on. So no, this is heavily frustrating for me, Joe, because this is awesome. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to watch this. Uh, this little thing, this yeah, thirty second clip, forty second clip. But oh, my bad. Sorry. Don't cut ten seconds, Joe. Don't cut <laughs> ten seconds. We close these two first. Okay. 
because this infuriates me. This is something as an animation guy, and you see what uh, uh, Image is doing with animation and what uh, Marvel's doing with animation. You're like, okay. But we, you, okay. I'll, I'll say my comments till after. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to watch this. This is from the people that pitched the Batman Beyond. Oh, I don't need the volume. That's for certain. Uh, it's cool. It's just it's just I mean, basically you leather. Need, you could have had a volume. It was just sound. Not like it said and, anything. And yeah, it was pretty cool to see him fly off like this uh, through the Neo. Uh, we should probably say it's this is the Batman Beyond thing for the just yeah the Batman Beyond. Not it's, yeah. it's on a channel on YouTube. Uh, I'll share it in a second once we're done watching. Batman is essentially flying around Gotham City, and we get to see his boosters go off. Uh, fly around a little bit more, and he goes into a fighting stance, and it cuts out. That symbol looks uh, awesome. I will say that. Yeah, it it does. It looks. I think it looks great. And yeah, so uh, I love this, Joe. It's from uh, v v v Vegito Vegito, I guess v Vegito uh, on YouTube. Uh, v e h g e t o on like YouTube. Vegeta only with an O. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I that's how I was trying to pronounce it. Not gonna lie, to you. <laughs> something like Vegeta here. Let's just it's, get this. It's literally it's Vegeta with no Vegeta. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I, I think this looks fantastic. I'm interested to hear your thoughts, that because you're you're holding holding. Uh, you're trying to you're gonna burst my bubble here, and I, I think. probably yeah. Um, do you? I don't disagree that you know. Image and Marvel is, is killing it with the, the animated stuff right now, um, which is awesome. And so, yeah, DC should be doing something that's not their directed to DVD stuff. Uh, but DC had their time in the 90s and uh, in the early 2000s. So it's not like they need to come back with any animated stuff. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. No, this would be an awesome project to do. <laughs> um you I would. A... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, no, this would be an awesome project to do. Uh, should they do it? Probably. Will they do it? No. This this the, the is only... what me. Because they've been trying to have the Batman Beyond, especially. They've been trying to get a project off the ground for what about a decade now? Live action too is back. Yeah, like forth, a something. So. so, but this can exist on its own, Joe. That's the most frustrating thing about this. This Batman Beyond. Uh, pitch that was given and concept video that we just watched mm -hmm. that can be on its own it doesn't have to be tied into anything it doesn't have to be tied in dcu it doesn't have to be tied into joker batman anything it can just exist on its own if it's bad you don't have to make any more of it you just say okay we listen to pitches at the very least it gives you a bit of a uh, bit more content? reputation reputation too with uh, content creators that if you can pitch us something that if it's good enough will be that we think is good enough we'll we'll go with it so yeah, but it's obvious DC isn't actually listening to the content creators oh, because oh. we've got literally nothing for the but animated stuff. We're gone is taking over. I was hoping that and where you where you see where now Marvel Animation for Marvel Studios is uh, alive and running like you get it, Marvel Animation got its own logo and intro of seeing old animated stuff in it. So oh, nice. and DC has I such a no, I haven't app. watched any Marvel Animation stuff. So um, DC has a good legacy and past of animation that it shouldn't just be like, oh yeah, we were really good once upon a time. Like, if you were smart, you would be like continuing to like, oh, let's put out an awesome Green Lantern series and end it after one season. Let's put out an awesome Young Justice series and let's end it after two seasons and not bring it back for ten years and think that it's going to be yeah like easy sailing on a streaming service that only Americans can view. So. Yeah, uh, it's it's very frustrating to see where DC animation has gone. But you get something like this. This could be in the vein of Into the Spider Verse. It's it's obviously a knockoff of it in terms of the style, but you could do that. I, I, I would not just would not be against that at all. I think Batman Beyond would be the perfect property to, to do that with. And if it's a hit, you could somehow incorporate time travel and have Batman Beyond interact with Batman. So. I, I, see, then, that, then that feels forced. Like that's no, if, if it's the, the reason it's why better. Batman Beyond was such a hit was because it was yes, as much as it was connected to the Batman animated series, Superman animated series, Justice League, it was its own thing. It was set in the future, and you would 
you would bring in a couple of characters that you knew from here or there, but it was its own thing. And that's what people loved about it. When you try to bring in characters that people know, I think that's that inherently is the problem is that it they can't, for whatever reason, get their heads wrapped around getting any of these projects off, off the ground. We're getting the Batman Cape Crusader over on Amazon Prime, which is fine. But like that is loosely connected to the animated series because it's it's stuff that Bruce Tim wanted to do but couldn't do. You got oh stop it. I couldn't help myself. Try to show. Um, <laughs> but okay, but when did that happen? Huh? Uh, that was after Batman Beyond. That was Beyond, after right? Batman Beyond was over, yes. Yeah. So you're, like, right. you're right. What I'm saying, my my statement still rings true. He I, just, well, I just couldn't help Justice myself. I just couldn't help myself. It, unfortunately, there was a watermark of Justice League Unlimited just there on the picture, so I was like, uh-huh. like oh, but uh-huh. it was the only one I could find. Um, I'm going to show this. But but what I'm what I'm basically getting at is Batman is a character, and not just Batman Beyond, but just Batman in general is a character that would make the money. It makes the yep. most sense to have that character, that show, that movie, something like that come out. It worked with Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. You know? So the, the, the this, thing would, this... this would be awesome, but they are, for whatever reason, their hands are tied somewhere. The thing that, the thing that uh, is, to me, Joe, is that I know you need to be protective of the Batman brand because, like you said just before, it makes money. Like, it's a money maker, so you don't want to have too much of it. You don't want to dilute your product. But or they do that themselves though with comics. If, so if like, you don't want stuff to be successful, you don't want stuff to be not be successful. You don't want to have anything not successful attached with the Batman name. But yeah. you can always be like, "This is Batman Beyond. This isn't even Batman. This is different. This isn't Bruce Wayne." To avoid that, if it's not a hit, but I do think this would be a great thing. I think this would be uh, something that would be. I wouldn't say unique because it would be in a vein Spider Verse, but not of your typical DC animation. So, but if I, I was James Gunn, I would at least listen to the pitch of this and see what they're thinking for the story if they have one. Spider Verse works because you already had at the point when the Spider first Spider Verse movie came out, you had three Tobey Maguire's, you had two Andrew Garfield's, you had one Tom Holland. Yeah, like you had multiple. You had multiple Spider Man movies out there, and multiple Spider Man origins. Obviously, you also figure factor in the animated show from the nineties, and then you don't touch any of those, and you bring in Miles Morales. Yeah, you bring in a character that you're literally starting at the ground level, you know, and building up from there, and that's why that movie is a success, and the character is a success, which is why he was in the Spider-Man video game. Why? Excuse me. He has his own game, and he's in Spider-Man too. Like he's a major part of that. So, like this character has grown naturally, and the fans have responded with how much with how much they loved it. Batman Beyond is another perfect example of that. Mm-hmm. You could start from scratch with yeah. Terry McGinnis finding the suit. I have seen. You can I've have Bruce Wayne being it. the re- reluctant mentor too, just like the Spider Man that's teaching Miles, a reluctant mentor. Don't want sure. to do it first, just and different he, reasons in why. He, or in the show, he didn't. Yeah, there is uh, there's a comic called uh, Batman Beyond the White Knight, it's part of the, the White Knight series, it's the third volume in that, where Batman Bruce Wayne is not the mentor, like Terry gets a suit for because of um, what's his powers. AJ Powers, whatever the heck his name is, um, like he basically directs Terry to go in, break into the cave and get the suit. At, at that point, Bruce is in jail. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Read the comics. Great comic. You'll find out how he's in jail with the comic. Um, so, like, he breaks into the cave, gets the suit, and then he becomes Batman Beyond. Uh, and then, after like Terry figures out what's going on there, then he joins with Bruce and he beca- he uses the Beyond suit. For good, um, but like that's a different origin story. So you could do some different origin stories with it. You trying to figure out where it's at? Where it was too? Yes, there somewhere. It's I again, just, Joe's not wrong about that. That's a really good comic too, Joe. I say I just rearranged my uh, comics. I finally, I finally have all my trades to where 
The trade paperbacks are all in a section. The Ooh. deluxe editions are all in a section. The omnibuses are all in a section. So, like, everything is uh, hardbacks or their own thing. Everything is even now. It's kind of nice. I got another bookshelf coming in here this weekend. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to see what else I can fit there. I do have other things there that, that are yeah, fun. Like, that, like, Batman Beyond, I would love to see that project come to light. I honestly don't see it ever happening if i'm being uh, honest i'm right there with you joe and it frustrates me because again this would be a prime thing for dc to do it it, it just that's what i would do anyway so let's take our final ad break of the evening before we wrap up our news and get into our smile retro recaps listeners more an ad support network we don't pick the ads or the volume i'm gonna give you a quick three count to adjust your volume and we'll be right back in three two one and we're back okay joe uh, just a bit more news, and then we have our Smallville Retro Recap to get over. Uh, so John Cena confirms Peacemaker 2 will film up until Christmas. And the funnest fact about this show, I was literally watching this show as I was doing the dishes for my lunch break uh, the other day and saw John Cena come on. Back fish up. And, yeah. yeah, and he, then he just said this. I was like, oh, good. I don't, and I wrote it down in a note, like on my notes app here. And I was going to just use that and, co- and take a screenshot of it. And then lo and behold, like a day later, it's shared in the Twitter thing there. So it just nice. clipped, clipped out the show thing. Yeah, he confirms that he's uh, doing season two of Peacemaker after he finishes a couple obligations he got here. Uh, nothing wrestling related. He's stopped wrestling now. He wants to, after Peacemaker season two, he wants to, but I don't know how much more he's going to be involved in DCU. But yeah, he wants to do another final wrestling run, apparently. I can uh, see him having a little bit of uh, screen time on Waller because isn't Waller and Peacemaker filming back to back? Or am I? I think so. Well, that's the rumors anyway. But we, okay. we don't know when Rob Wall- Waller's. We don't know officially when Waller is starting up. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Like so, I, I can see him maybe popping up in there. Yep. But uh, I mean, hell, if The Rock can come back to wrestling, like, well, John Cena and John The Rock had a face off this past or a couple weekends or last oh, weekend last, last weekend yeah oh during the, uh the, WrestleMania? The WrestleMania big event yeah, yeah so and I, I didn't watch yeah. it i was uh, invited <laughs> i was invited i had a couple friends uh watching it at a uh at a thing and i saw the picture i'm like huh cool i, I like don't care like, i don't give a crap like, i would like to see hulk, hulk do a slam <laughs> No, no, no! Like I was, uh, I was recording, so I couldn't really go watch it anyway. But that's not the point. The point is, like, could have got an invite. Just say, could have got an invite. Yeah, I could have. You know, no, I was even. I could. But... I could have told you no, I couldn't come, <laughs> but you, you didn't invite me. So I just whatever. I'll talk about it on the podcast. You won't listen to. So uh, we'll go on <laughs> to uh, James Mangold's next project. It's expected to be Dawn of the Jedi, and then Swamp King, uh, Swamp Thing will come after that. Uh, this is from the Hollywood Reporter. Do you think there's a chance that he doesn't do Swamp Thing, or do you think that's definitely uh, one that we can lock in because they really they had him penciled in for this right when they started? Pretty early. Um, no, I think I think it'll happen. I think yeah. he's going to do it. Uh, but he I, contracts like he God I needs to do go through. Star God Wars needs first, to go so. through, and he needs Mangold to take uh, Swamp Thing. So I hope it happens. I hope there's no anything there i hope they're a little patient with him but gun did say too uh and another comment like some things are moving faster than other things it all depends on script and availability yep. and things that they thought were going to go first and might not get well obviously built. you know superman is first but yeah. well creature commandos is first but superman is first that's the um, other thing that's annoying is like that's first and then superman's the first feature film in the dcu but then uh, Blue Beetles coming over from the DC, yeah, or, like, or he exists in the DC. Honestly, you could just, I understand you want to have Superman first because it's Superman. Hold like, the other things, not you could, yeah, you could <laughs> not have Creature Commandos come out before Superman, but you, you're you already done with it all. Everybody's already Blue recorded Beetle everything. Animation's out, done. Blue Beetle could have came out in 2026. Should the have helped. Same film. Look, <laughs> they, exactly, they should have held that one, yeah, and then put it in the DCU as much as I love it. They should have held it and put it in DCEU, the new DCEU. And look, oh, the character can come over. It's great. Because it's not like there was any other character in the not show. All. Nothing, nothing, nothing that attached us. Maybe a logo of Wayne of Gotham U maybe were similar. I'm not sure. So that might be like, had bare bones, the connect tissue. Connect oh, the tissue guess what? 
you know that there's a thing called special effects that they can just go in there and digitally change it. They did that for for uh, Ghost Star of Afterlife. Star Wars too. Then they need to change some of the stuff and some of the special features, like the canteen, where they put in different people that's, or more. That's later. What yeah. I'm saying, but yes, they did that. But for uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, they literally changed the dates on the wall because the movie came out was done. It was supposed to come out in 2020. COVID happened. They pushed it to 2021 and changed the dates to match up for 2021. Okay. Hmm. So they can do it. It's not hard. So we had a lot of uh, scuttlebutt last week of, and again, I'm glad we didn't go on, uh, as had this as a main topic, like what happened the week prior where we had Two-Face casting, potential casting as the main topic, and then Gunn the day after our episode was like, yeah, yeah. that's not true at all. So well, this was going around, was anyway. This was going around about uh, Bizarro Superman being or uh, Ultraman being the uh, main. No, villain. first you're right. First it was Bizarro, and then it became Ultraman. Yeah, and basically, James, uh, basically, uh, what's his name? Um, David, David Corsman David playing the second role. Is going to be playing two roles. Yeah, it's like, come on, like. Why? Well, it, it, he could, Joe, for like a post credit scene where maybe that's the first team up that Gunn's leading to, like Crisis on Two Earths. So we, they find out about a second Earth and they have to fight the crime syndicate. So that is a possibility of just one little post credit the... scene of it, but it's not going to be a whole thing. Like it's not going to be yeah, the main the, villain. The, the who who was it that was uh, sent that out? Because they my doubled... time or Daniel RPK or my was it, time. I said it was Daniel. Or, yeah, or but like post... they doubled down. Like oh he. He's not saying it's true, or he's trying to whatever. Like, dude, shut up. He's literally he, he, he literally he, you're you're trying to. I get that you're a scooper and you're trying to get the information from the show for the movie to be the first one to put it online. But like, my god, Daniel RPA, hey, okay, join my Patreon. Click, 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 click. That's like as much this, as though. one of the bad things about hosting a podcast, talk about stuff is like we get all of this. We kind of get spoiled on stuff, which sucks. But at the same time, it's like, I just want to see the movie. Calm yes. down. Like, I don't need to know literally every detail this of the movie thing, before I go see the movie. Just turn into this machine where you get everything beforehand. And it's very frustrating. I hate like, it. Get some of the stuff but like No Way Home and Kip's stuff hid is still impressive to this day. Uh, the, the thing is, though, because this is Superman and because there's so much stock in this, they if they wanted to keep quiet... They need to just hammer down to literally everybody because who got to watch too. You don't want a set that... leak picture well, of not, Superman's not costume that. as that first, first oh, 100%. reveal. You don't but, want that. But even like whoever it was, my time or, or Daniel, like they said, my source in the film is saying that this is ha- this is real. Mm-hmm. Okay, first off, you need to not be saying that because you're nope. already saying you're already giving away that you've got a source inside. So now James Gunn is going to be looking at people. Like, you're already... But you're you're already is, he, is he, though? Because up. James Gunn says, the primary protagonist of Superman is, shockingly, Superman. The main villain of Superman is, shockingly, Lex Luthor. I don't know where all the stuff is coming from that it is something other than this. There are so many stories coming out every day. It's difficult to deal with, and every time I strike something down, I'm giving it attention. So I'll say again, don't believe anything unless you see it here. And why would you want to know everything before the movie comes out anyway? That last sentence I have a little bit of issue with just because you want people discussing your film leading up to the film. So you want people speculating. You want theories. You want potential things of what they might could be. So I think maybe better wording of that last little bit because, again, some of your fans don't want to know everything, but they do want some tidbits to tie them over until – uh, the film comes out, and then they'll watch the film over and over and over again, and look for different things in the film, and so yeah, but, I do but, think that there is a element of people that want to know a little more because there, we don't know a whole lot about the film right now, and that's fine. But yeah, like, I don't if if David Cornsworth is playing two characters, I don't want to like, know that. I do, that that sounds yeah. like if it's if he's not the main protag- or antagonist of the film, that's a mid credit scene. Yeah. I, I don't, don't want to know, know anyway. That. I don't need to know anyway, yeah. Joe. But again, if there's other people that want to talk about it and this gets buzz with the general audience and more people see the film, I'm fine with that too. Like we don't have to participate in that exact discussion where there's spoilers. We don't. 
but it gets put around there, and then we yep. have a situ- a Black Adam situation where, oh, here's Henry Cavill back as Superman, and it's going to promote the movie, even though he's only in it for that is a, a matter of a minute. Thing. That was one of the dumber things. Like, you need to have them, them have a fight or something if you're going to, uh, like, oh, so, but so I'm saying, like, you're you're getting all this information, and then I you're literally telling me what the the thing is. And mid credit scenes are notorious for the next the upcoming projects. Now, obviously, yep. DC isn't good about that. The last couple of films being a very big indicator of that. But like, you know, I don't need to know what the mid credit scene is going to be or the post credit scene. Like, I it, just let me watch the movie, and enjoy the movie. Yeah, and I'm I'm there with you. Still the idea, I know. No, it's not at all. It's it, again because this is this is kind of morphed into a little bit like uh, a, a little bit like the sport. Like I've always said, the sports rumors thing where people get traded. Now there's they they have to generate content to uh, discussions to talk about every day. They don't believe half the shit they talk about, but they no. need people calling in, complaining, arguing. Need people. Yeah, listening. that's just that's just. Um... Shady. That's just the world we live in anymore. Yeah. Yep, it is. So again, uh, we're we're excited, and we don't want to know if there is a Bizarro or a Ultraman. I don't want to know unless you're showing me in the trailers because you think I need to know what going in. Exactly. So, oh, oh, I will admit though that seeing Doomsday in the oh, BF just not even talk about that. That's, that's so frustrating. Even possible. though, and then they've redeemed themselves in the not... trailer with the uh, uh, Batman fight scene at the start of it. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, I forgot about you showing Doomsday." But but, but here's the other thing though, like. It's not the like James Gunn isn't putting the trailer out. He's nope. just giving the company that put that puts the trailer together all of the film that he has right now. Yeah, and then they make a trailer. So it's going to be. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's, I'm it's not very, happy. Very frustrating but process. Hopefully, but... hopefully they can actually this time around they can keep a like a I'm better, okay with better grip on what Joker too. Joker 2, that trailer was fine. Didn't give away anything and made you speculate some things and you go on and you get ready for the, the film. But like you said, this is the world but we live in. But the thing with Joker 2, though, we kind of we know that this is going to be him and Harley Quinn. So mm-hmm. it, we know it's going to be a musical. That they've already said that. So what they haven't, they're not giving us something. But this movie isn't going to be the action heavy movie that a superman's gonna be this no. is gonna be a more of a a a, a deep thinker because mm-hmm. the first one was the first one was yes it had some action but like it was a psychological thriller at times um and, and the, so this one maybe not thriller but you know what i mean like it, it made yeah. you like pay attention like you're actually watching it and getting a, a story and like i said you had an unreliable narrator there with arthur fleck with joker there for a majority of the movie this is Joker 2 is gonna be something similar to that, in my opinion, versus yeah. Superman, which is a literal superhero action movie. Yeah. So the trailer has to be you know, show way that. more CG heavy and all that yeah. stuff. So yeah. Uh again, I we'll wait until James Gunn tells us if there's any other villains other than uh Lex Luthor, because we've seen Lex Luthor, he's told us Lex Luthor's in the film. And the, the last little last little thing, Joe. Uh, action copy, uh, a copy of Action Comics one featuring the first appearance of Superman sold for six million dollars, making it the most expensive comic ever. From here, yeah, I, I think it was a like a 1952 printing. It wasn't. It wasn't a 38 printing. No, it was a. It was an older. But the condition like was newer. like. I mean, honestly, anything before the 60s. It's hard to find those older like 30s like in any kind of condition too. So I believe the, there's the only. Last I knew, there's only like six mm-hmm. uh, that are still, yeah. I would say, in circulation, but they're all in somebody's private whatever. Um, yeah, like anything that you see, if it's not a 1938 print, which again, those are in somebody's house in a sh- in a in a lock uh, in a safe somewhere. Like they're gonna be like the, the somewhere in the 40s reprint and. Even those are, so and those are even like another ones that are hard to find because of the war, because of I, I, who would I talk, who would I listen to? I listened to somebody where they were talking about like, yeah, comics from the the thirties, forties, fifties. We didn't give a crap. Like we use them for insulation, yeah, in buildings. So like, there are houses that are almost seventy years old 
that will have maybe have an action comics number one in there. You don't know. <laughs> oh man. Like I could only there's a story about that, and I'll I can tell it real quick here. Not me, but there was a story I read somewhere where they were this couple was remodeling and they came across an action comics number one in their wall. The 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 guy knew exactly what it was. He was super excited, he's telling his wife, and then his mother-in-law sees it and telling her what it is, and she's like, Oh, that's amazing. Let me see it. And it's like she goes to grab it. And he's like, no, they rip it in half. This $600,000 comic dropped down to like a $50,000 comic. Like that. I can't believe she would do that. I would punch her in the face. Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure there was either a divorce or or mother-in-law is not living with them anymore. Uh this again, it's just crazy prices for comics, and it's only going up because they're not printing those anymore because they printed them back a hundred years ago, almost now. And I've got a copy, but it was the loot crate exclusive from like seven years ago, yeah. But like, I mean, that may be worth 10 bucks, and you'll see that I'll see that version at conventions. I've seen a 60s action comics number one, uh, at a convention, I think they wanted a couple hundred. Like maybe close to a thousand for it, which I'm like, yeah, I'm good. So um, yeah, like it, they're out there, but the anything before the '60s, nah, you ain't. That's not at. That's not my local convention. You're gonna know, need to go like San Diego Comic Con or C2E2 or like WonderCon or something for those. Yeah, and again, that's something I don't even want to put my fingers on. I'm afraid I might destroy it. Uh, so, Joe, that wraps up our news. Just a little bit of Smallville virtual recaps, as Joe did not get a chance to watch. Nope. Uh, either, and he doesn't remember them, which is more nope. astonishing to me, because I remember watching both of these back in the day. Uh, Pariah was the first one, and that one was the conclusion of the Alicia story, where she's killed by that weird old creepy guy who loves things being the way they were back in the day. Uh, he basically is Sandman, and... Oh. He kills her, hangs her after framing her a few times. Everyone doesn't believe her. Clark does. And then Clark finally doesn't believe her. And then she dies. Clark is great performance showing the first death of someone that Clark really cared about. Loved it. And then he gets his revenge. But before she dies, she shows Chloe that Clark uh, has abilities because she says her powers are not working. Her powers aren't working. And she's going to go off the bridge. She teleports her and Chloe out of the car. And then they watch as Clark catches it, and Chloe's astonished. And that is always a such a fantastic reveal. And Chloe just needles him this rest of this season until the end of the season about about his powers while pretending like she doesn't know. So uh, really cool reveal there. And the Leech of Death stuff, that was all uh, great Smallville. And then the next episode was Recruit. And I tell you, that was very blah. <laughs> uh, it, it starred uh, a guy, the character's name was Jeff Johns. Uh, he was a star running back coming from the same school that uh, Smallville school that Clark did. He showed him the roles because Clark was getting recruited. Then he they find out that uh, he's using his powers to injure people, para- para- paralyze them, and get all these records. And some one of his teammates was going to sh- rat on him, but he basically killed him. And that same teammate lost to Lois in drinking competition at the start of the episode. And Lois was on the hook for killing him uh, because she foiled his advances when he was drunk and she got blamed for it but buddy went in finished the job and lois got off the hook for that and then we get a cool scene where clark gives up his dream of being a football player because he realizes that he has powers and it's too tempting to try and win one of the games or try to do good with the powers so he walks away and his family goes like good job clark and that's the end of that one too it's a good little heartfelt moment at the end but that second I mean, one compared to the first one the first they, one was, uh after we watch the first episode. One, best episode of the season, in my opinion. Pariah. Okay. okay. Best episode of the season. Yeah. Okay. So you you would you'd enjoy that one. The second one. I'll was, rewatch. I'll get to watch them because I want to watch the sh- like. Tocqueville watch- had yeah. the Alicia actress on. Uh, and I bet then, that one guy was happy. And then they had the oh yeah for sure. And then they had the guy from the the oh intro song the somebody save me. Oh, nice. He was there, and he basically gave up music. His his interview was a little depressing, not gonna lie. It's like, uh, yeah, the band broke up shortly after, uh, shortly before the 
just before the you guys chose the song and then we kind of stuck together to get like the monetary benefits of that and he said it was a pretty rough time mm. <laughs> it's just like dude this is like very sad and you see him trying to uplift it and yeah so this is a fun one to go check out uh <laughs> the most recent small uh talk bill uh and they're doing a live one too so that would be pretty cool wish i live in california to see that okay joe that wraps up the week uh nothing else for me on the notes here uh we'll be back next week with more dc news uh dead boy detective is coming out at the end of the month oh, yeah, we'll we get had a trailer we'll, for that we'll get sure that. that too we'll get that in may i think that's just true i think we might have recovered that trailer in our last episode uh, i don't think we did no, or maybe it's the no because one. it came out la- it came out last week and we didn't have an episode last week oh so we will hold the trailer for next week and talk about what we potentially could see in the dead pool dead boys detective that works okay All right, listeners, we will see you next week with more DC goodness. Till then, see everyone. Bye, y'all.